very kind introduction mayura it's always a pleasure to be a part of this meeting and uh, at the onset i would like to thank each and every one for adjusting their times because of me and the last moment i had some emergencies to attend this is definitely a good session of talking on tidbits of diabetes and i tell you management of diabetes has definitely improved with point of care testing and will definitely help in even reduction in complications of diabetes both micro and macro vascular complications and these are the table of contents which i'm going to address trends in diabetes important test and frequency as per the guidelines and challenges in achieving guidelines recommended testing frequencies impact of pocity in achieving guideline recommended hba1c testing frequency india specific recommendations for in clinic pocts in diabetes management lipid profile and cardiac risk assessment in diabetes management using point of care testing to stratify atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk and screening diabetes patients for kidney disease using albumin creatinine ratio and if you see the trends in diabetes uh, the estimated population to uh, in 2019 was 1363 millions and the estimated number of diabetic patients were 77 and the estimated uh, number of undiagnosed diabetics were 43.9 millions and estimated number of people with igt were 25.2 national diabetes prevalence is close to 9% and close to 15 to 20% in urban population and estimated death due to diabetes and its complication is very high and if you see the cost is ex extremely very very uh, big concern especially in the increasing prevalence of increasing incidence and prevalence of diabetes there is a rapid rate of uh, growth in diabetes and high undiagnosed growth rate is an issue that needs to be addressed immediately and uh, we had recently a uh, very uh, interesting screening of diabetes and that is going to help in early diagnosis overall cost of treatment in usd has declined partially due to drug pricing control and igt and death numbers have declined and that's a good sign in indicates better management and overall diabetes related testing including pocity could be contributors so what are the important tests as per the guidelines we do hba1c along with fasting and pp with structured uh, asmbg uh, which has been recommended to most of our diabetic patients HbA1c two to three times per year in stable glycemic control and quarterly in patients who have recently changed medications or are not meeting glycemic controls. Use of POCTs for HbA1c provides the opportunity to work for more time with treatment changes. Albumin creatinine ratio at least more than uh, one time per year or three in six months to confirm more for monitoring changes in therapy. Uh, so once in a year is definitely recommended if patient does not have nephropathy and if patient has got one time positive then he should repeat at least three readings in six months to confirm whether he has got uh, a diabetic nephropathy or no fasting lipid uh, panel or in fact today we can even do a random lipid panel liver function test serum creatinine and calculated glomerular filtration rate blood pressure and probably in the near future we will have agps included in this uh, guideline for testing so this is a very important chart which is definitely going to help why i am saying this recently i had a patient who had come to my clinic and he says doctor for last 10 years i never had a good hba1c control or a lipid control and i'm really worried about it right now because i've started getting complications of diabetes i could feel the complications of diabetes i'm losing weight i'm losing muscles my legs and uh, 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 upper limb are getting thinner so i'm really worried about diabetes now and believe me he came frequently for uh, hba1c and i suggested him to do structured asmbgs and he follow up us 2 to 3 months very regularly and in within 6 to 8 months time he could actually achieve his hba1c to the target values and that is what he realized because he could not dedicate time for going to a laboratory and testing it and getting a report and visiting again with the report so that was a real big challenge for him so once he realized that he could visit the doctor and get the reports at the same time in probably half an hour time so he was uh, very very compliant about it so that is how point of care testing is going to change the patient's compliance and adherence for evaluation for complications of diabetes as well so various guidelines give similar testing recommendation a1c 
mostly less uh, less than seven percent by ADA, ESC, ESD is less than seven percent, IDF less than seven percent, uh, LDL uh, cholesterol less than hundred, and ESC, ESD says uh, especially ESC says less than seventy for very high risk group, otherwise less than one hundred, and IDF at diagnosis and annually is less than hundred. So you need to have these target values for all your diabetic patients visiting your clinic. Similarly, albumin creatinine ratio should be less than 30 milligrams per gram and blood pressure uh, monitoring should be there every visit and you should try to keep this uh, to the lower values of less than 140 by 90 every visit, probably less than 140 by 80 uh, at every visit is uh, easier to catch up and at least annually and every routine visit if the patient has CBD or is on associated medications. Even today, home blood pressure monitoring has been recommended by most of our, uh, uh, suggested to most of our patients. Challenges in achieving guideline recommended testing frequency is that, that the compliance with guideline target for diabetes management is already poor and only 26.7% of the patients diagnosed with diabetes met guideline targets for frequency of glycemic blood pressure or cholesterol control. So you can understand the problem of compliance and adherence again and almost less than 7% was tested at the recommended frequency for HbA1c testing and this is the US data. You can believe what is the data from our country. Most of the districts in our in my state of Jharkhand lacks HbA1c testing, proper HbA1c testing and most of the doctors and the physicians and my colleagues are still struggling to get a good HbA1c reports routinely for their diabetic patients. So that is what is very, very important uh, thing to address today. Treatment frequency is also very, very important. Achieving HbA1c less than 7%. If you see 70% of the patient tested and treated according to ADA guidelines met HbA1c goals and only 30% met HbA1c goals if they did not meet guidelines for their either testing frequency or treatment modifications. So you can understand screening and uh, evaluation and testing is so important in your diabetes management. So impact of POCT in guideline recommended HbA1c uh, testing is that almost 95% of your patient charts had guideline compliant HbA1c testing with significant decrease in HbA1c levels. And ADA compliant testing frequency is definitely going to decrease the HbA1c levels. So that is what is very, very important. Tell your patients to come to my clinic regularly, visit as uh, recommended, and you will find the difference in your uh, reaching to target values. Look for POCT HbA1c that is fully automatic, easy to use, certified and accredited with US FDA, NGSP, IFCC, etc. And India's specific recommendation for in clinic POCT in diabetes management. So these are very, very important uh, guidelines. And this was uh, published uh, three years back in May 2018, a recommendation for in clinic POCT for diabetic management in India. The following summarized principles were uh, established. POCT definition was uh, defined, advantages and critical aspects, key recommendation as on in clinic POCT's implementation by the panel and the panel of experts, diabetologists, clinicians developed consensus standards to address the quality gaps in in clinic point of care testing, especially pertaining to diabetes care and management in India. And the key points were acceptable performances standardized to establish reference, NGSP and IFCC certified simplified operations and clear waivers and good memory for stories of results of about 500 uh, patient test and control samples, clinical management software connectivity, data collection or sharing in simple manner by USB or RS232 ports, etc. All diabetes relevant parameters could be done, important parameters could be done at a single platform. Report A1C results in both NGSP and IFCC units along with uh, estimated average glucose. No results should be reported, displayed when correct results may not be possible to achieve. So these are few important uh, components of the recommendation and the control process in POCT device is also very, very important to minimize the probability of pre-analytical and post-analytical errors and accurate calibration based on barcoded test cartridges, internal quality control checks, all these things actually try to minimize the errors. No sample transportation is needed, expertise-based access for multiple users, no auto verification and no delay in reporting and it's fully, fully automated. 
and availability and accreditation of POCT tests. Good lab accurate POCTs are available and one should look for the following traceability, certification and accreditation, test parameters, traceability to reference standards, certification and accreditation. So all these things are very, very important before installing a POCT device. Many of the above certifications like NGSP and IFCC require annual renewals. So always look for currently valid documents. This is also very, very important. So lipid profile and cardiac risk assessment in diabetes management, how does it help? If you see the coronary heart disease, the cerebral vascular disease and the peripheral arterial disease are the important components of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Rheumatic heart disease basically is a disease of uh, heart muscles and heart valves and because of rheumatic fever caused by streptococcal bacteria and congenital heart disease is another uh, malformations of the heart structure existing at birth. So we are going, we are in diabetic patients, we are more interested in ASCVDs. And if you see the CVD in diabetes and the estimated impact, limited population-based data is available today uh, as far as the prevalence of CAD in India is concerned, particularly comparing people with and without type 2 diabetes. Today, along with the ASCVD, we also talk a lot about heart failures. And if you see the uh, CUSP study, which was published from Chennai, uh, estimated uh, prevalence is almost 21.4%, and the prevalence has increased alarmingly, alarmingly by 50% from 2007 to 2017. So this is a very, very uh, a big concern for all of us to actually get hold of it and reduce the progression of CAD. Indians are developing the diabetes at an early age and have severe cardiovascular complications early with worse outcomes. And the cholesterol testing and control is integral to all diabetes management guidelines and goals. It is also widely recommended to patients by clinicians and ASCVD risk should similarly be understood and adopted by clinicians as a mandatory assessment for all diabetic patients. Now, what are the barriers for ASCVD risk stratification tools in clinical practice. If you see the guideline barrier, lack of universal guideline to measure ASCVD risk. So risk stratification tools are complex and time consuming for practice assistants. Risk profiles not fully integrated in the electronic patient record. They could be behavioral presented by physicians or healthcare providers. No motivation to spend extra time on explanation. Lack of motivation towards preventive care. Lack of knowledge. Risk communication is difficult. Shared decision making is only useful in theory and still managing single risk factors. First reaction is drug prescription. And by the patients, if you see lack of knowledge, do not present in a fasting state. Preventive medicines and practices are not entitled for claims or reimbursement. And patient will tell you, Dr. Sahib, blood sugar ke liye main aaya hoon, ab sugar mera control kar dijiye pas aur mujhe kuch nahi chahiye. And they usually don't take medicines to actually take care of uh, aluminuria or to take care of uh, dyslipidemia. They stop after sometimes on their own. Hamare ko kuch problem nahi hai. So that is where we need to actually address again and again. That these are very, very important components of preventive therapy. So the recommended strategies to overcome barriers to ACVD risk stratification is uh, CVD risk model should be adopted. That should be easy to calculate, less time consuming, easy to understand, and should be reproducible and comparable without any subjective bias. A POCT device is programmed to calculate CV risk on physician's desk. Periodical educational programs and campaigns like Know Your Heart Risk Score can be useful to spread awareness and policymakers should consider preventive measures to be incorporated in day-to-day -day practice. And ASCVD risk in diabetes managed patients, if you see, it's an evaluation of ASCVD risk will help refine risk estimates and therapeutic decision making like a higher trajectory of lifetime risk can be calculated. ASCVD risk increases incrementally with age. So as the patient uh, age, their risk also increases. So these are very, very important parameters to be included. And many cases where non-fasting lipid profiles can be considered should be done for primary prevention. Adults 20 years or older who are free from ASCVD can measure LDLC with a non-fasting sample when estimating ASCVD risk and document baseline LDLC levels. 
for triglycerides more than 400 we can repeat with the fasting sample so this is the only uh, cut off which is to be cautioned monitoring is uh, once in a year if everything is fine or if the patient has got significant risk dyslipidemia every 3 to 6 months they should be monitored children and adolescent with a family history should be also be monitored and moderate hypertriglyceridemia should also uh, be taken into an account So really sorry, you have only two yeah, minutes. Yeah, I have just one more, uh, two slides to go, my Yuraj. Just one more slide to go. Look for US FDA certified lipid profile with ASCBT risk assessment in the POCT you choose, and using POCT uh, testing to stratify can help a lot of risk assessment from uh, personalized CBT prevention to actually facilitate decision making and treatment to actually follow up the treatment uh, which you had started for your patients. So these are very very uh, just with a finger stick whole blood sample you can actually decide in day to day clinic. Albumin creatinine ratio is another important tool in uh, POCTs, which can be actually very very helpful to identify early renal disease in uh, diabetes and hypertensive patients. And the ADA recommends performing an annual test to assess urine albumin excretion. And albumin creatinine ratio test is preferred and should be done for type one diabetic patients with a duration of five years. All type two patients with diabetes starting at diagnosis, and all diabetic patients with comorbid hypertension, and even in patients with pregnancy, we should do because pregnancy can actually worsen the nephropathy. So, final slide: POC testing benefits in managing diabetes and its complication. Short and easy workflow minimizes pre-analytical errors. Few POCs have good result qualities and are accredited, certified by US FDA. NGSP, IFCC, and are also a part of CAP NGSP assessments. Improves HbA1c testing frequency and helps meet guidelines recommended frequency. Easy to assess for CKD, diabetic kidney disease risk within clinics with ACR, and easy to measure comprehensive lipid profile and assess ASCBD risk. This leads to better disease management and better outcomes in the form of better control HbA1c's. Repeated testing on the same device leads to better trend establishment and decision making. Easy to use device makes it easy to adopt to be by the paramedical staff. So I thank everyone for this uh, opportunity. I thank the organizers. I thank Dr. Bansi Sabu and his team, Dr. Hardik, for uh, giving me this opportunity on this Sunday evening for this uh, very auspicious meeting. Thank you very much.